Glazing is a magical technique that can literally change your painting. I cannot tell you how often I turned my painting around by applying some glaze. A good glaze can add intensity to color, adjust value, unify and harmonize your painting. And it is very easy to do. So today I want to share with you the magic of glazing. Hi, this is Eric from Cafe Watercolor. The transparency nature of watercolor makes it a perfect medium for glazing. So what is glazing? It's a transparent layer you put down after your painting is dry. It gives a unifying color overlay to your painting. It's kind of like putting a color spotlight on your stage and changing the look. As the light passes through the layers of your watercolor paintings, it changes the color. So when you have a transparent layer, you change the color of the light. This is a very powerful tool you have as a watercolor painter. So today I want to show you some quick demos on how to apply a glaze, when to apply it, and what effect will it have on your painting. After that, I will share with you a demo of a portrait that shows how it came together after glazing. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so here we have a quick value study of a cat. Now you can kind of tell where the lighting is, it's backlit, so you can see the room light of the cat. Now this is just a value study, the finished painting is already done, but I just want to use this value study as an example of how to do a glazing. So I'll mix a warm color and add plenty of water because you don't want your color to be really opaque. In terms of what color to use, that's really up to you. There are some semi-transparent color, there's some standing color, but as long as you add enough water, they will all be transparent. That's just how it is. So if I just paint over that, do a glazing. Now, it's not going to look that good because the underneath color is black and white. So even if I do a glazing on top, the warmth is not going to go so far because there's already some gray underneath. And while it is wet because I just paint a layer, a wet layer on top, you can actually do some wet on to wet work while you are at it. Now I can potentially turn this into a full color painting, but again, it's not going to look that good because there's already some black and white color underneath it. I can do some wet onto wet on the ear. That's what glazing is about. You're just putting transparent layer on top and that will change the overall look of the painting. And oftentimes I don't glaze over the whole painting, just the area that I need. So I'm going to bring an old painting that I did and do some glazing on top and see how it's going to change the look of the painting. So there's already some sort of dirty water on my palette because there's some leftover paint mixtures on there and I just add some water and it turned into this kind of transparent reddish color. So I'm going to use this but also just add a little bit more yellowish color so that will make it into a color that I want to glaze with. Very transparent and watery, that's the point of glazing. If you use something a little bit too opaque, then that's just another layer, which is fine if that's what you want to do. But the point of glazing is that you want stuff underneath to show through and at the same time, you want to add some color on top. So I think this looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do is to do a very quick test here. Okay, so that color looks pretty good for what I want to achieve. So what I'm going to do is to just use a big brush. Okay, load my brush and I'm just going to paint through some of those white areas as well. So they're not super bright white. Okay, so including here. And the thing about glazing is you don't have to paint over everything, just the area that you wanted to. And use a big brush, 
Okay. The reason you want to use a big brush is that it will be easier for you to go over the area with a nice big consistent wash. If you use a brush that is too small, you are going to paint it with too many strokes and that's not what you want. You want a big nice brush that can soak up a lot of mixtures so you can just go over it like that. So let's wait for this part to dry and let me get to the building. Now for the building, we want it to be actually just a little bit cooler so i'll be using the same mixture but i'm just going to add some blue colors so cobalt blue cerulean blue ultramarine blue as well okay and same i'm gonna do a quick test okay and that looks decent i can actually make it just a little bit more opaque this is an old painting so i don't really care if this ruins the old painting but there we go. And look at that, we just give it another layer of color. And the same thing, try to use a big brush. And I still want to preserve the highlight here, so I'm not gonna paint into it. Okay, so we give it a very kind of transparent layer on top. And just like on the road, we can actually do some wet on too wet if we want to. So in this case, I actually want to get some of the warm bounce light back. So something over here. Not too much water though. So a bit of warmth here. I'm gonna add some red, a bit of more warmth here. And I think that's about it. So at the glance, it doesn't look that much different because the shape doesn't really change. But the value wise, you can see the building feels a little bit darker. So that means the car, the highlights on the car feels a little bit brighter. And the colors on the road is a little bit warmer as well because I put a warm color glaze on it. So the sunlight feels a little bit warmer as well. And of course, after it is dry, if it doesn't feel warm enough, I can add another layer of glazing. But since it's not exactly like a sunset time, I just want to add a little bit more warmth to it. So if you put it side by side, you can actually tell a little bit of difference. So that's the general idea of glazing. You put some transparent layers of color on top of a painting that's already dry, and maybe you can adjust the color or the value. Hope this simple demo gives you a good idea about glazing. Now I want to share with you the process of this portrait painting. Honestly, I struggled quite a bit with this painting. I wanted to keep this painting looking light and airy, but the values were not working. Lights are too light, darks are too dark. So I take a deep breath and do several layers of glazing, and that unified the look of the painting it desperately needed. So let's take a look at the process of this painting. Before we start though, if you like this video and my content, consider giving a like and subscribe, ring the bell icon for more video like this one. Okay, so without further ado, let's take a look. Okay, so let's take a look at this portrait painting. Since the line drawing is not the focus of the video, I'm going to speed it through a little bit faster. It is important to know that I spend quite a bit of time on the line drawing because the lighting is really soft and not really distinct in the photo. So I have to spend a little bit extra time to get the structure and the proportion down. The underdrawing might seem dry and boring, but it is very, very important, especially for portrait. A good line drawing is really going to boost your confidence when you start to paint watercolor because you know where things exactly going to be. So you don't have to second guess yourself when you are painting. So I roughly draw out the structure and the proportion of the head and I use a mechanical drawing to draw a little bit more detail with cleaner lines. And I erase the construction drawings that I did to leave just enough for me to able to see what I paint. So here comes the first wash. I pre-mix the color for the skin tone and I just do a very light overall wash for the skin. Now aside from the earring and the hat and parts of the shirt, 
most of the stuff are going to be darker in value than her skin tone. So when I lay down the first wash, I can go outside of her face and that will be okay. And while the first wash is still wet, you can do some wet onto wet, adding some just to make things look a little bit more interesting right off the bat. It's not exactly necessary though, so if your wash is already starting to dry, don't stress out. You can wait for the next wash to add more colors. It is more important to have a clean, nice, transparent first wash than adding a different variety of colors in it. So here, I continue to add some more colors. And I also use a damp brush to lift some paint just to have a little bit more light coming out. But the first wash again is very transparent and I can always add more colors later on. So the first wash is pretty much dry. I can start my second wash. Now the second wash I usually like to start off with painting the eye and from the eye, I go outwards into other part of the face. So I start with the eyelid, the upper eyelid, and the lower eyelid, connect that to the iris, and the structure of the eye socket. The tricky thing about this painting is that because the lighting is really not distinct, it's a little bit hard to create a sense of structure in the painting. So I have to exaggerate just a little bit and paint the structure of the face. And when you are painting the portrait, make your brush stroke counts. You should consider the structure of the face when you are laying down your brush strokes, almost like if you are sculpting. And very important to connect the shape, even though we are painting the portrait, the same principle applies when we are painting landscape. You want to connect shapes. You don't want to separate your face into different little shapes. You want them to feel together, cohesive. And also be mindful of your edges. Some edges need to be softened. I usually use a damp brush to soften the edge while it is still wet. But some edges you actually want to keep them sharp. Sharp edges can really enhance the structure of your portrait. So don't avoid it completely. I said it many times before, if you try to soften all of the edges in your portrait painting, the face is going to look like a mush and you don't want that. So take the lips for example. I did have a sharp edge on the bottom just to separate that to the chin a little bit more. But also on the side, I soften it so the lips feels like it connects to the skin. So it's not a complete separate entity. Even though in the photo, she's wearing a lipstick, so her lips really pops out from her face, we still want to try to soften and connect shapes when we can. We are not trying to replicate photo one-to-one. -one. It'll be very hard to compete with a photograph. So I don't try to do that, and instead I try to paint my own painting. Photograph is just a reference. So a lot of time you need to paint what you understand and what you know, not just what you see. So I start to paint the second wash using a slightly more opaque mixture. We try to interpret more structure on her face. Again, this portrait is a lot more tricky than I thought because of the lighting. Even though her face is really bright, it's actually in a huge shadow casted by her hat. It's still very light because the surrounding is very bright, so she's getting a lot of ambient light. So the light is very soft, and I really like that sense of softness in the lighting. That's what attracted me to do this portrait. And unfortunately, that's also the tricky part of this portrait. So I didn't really know what I got myself into until I really started to paint this portrait. And now I'm starting to get into a little bit more detail with the dark. Paint her eyelashes, eyebrow, and the iris. Add some dark to the nostril. I usually don't like to paint the nostril too dark. Just a little bit of hint should do. This is a tricky stage. I really need to make conscious decision where I paint. If I paint too much, 
it can start to look dirty and start to look too busy. But if I don't paint enough, it doesn't feel finished. It is not going to have enough visual information for the viewer to see. And when you are starting to paint the detail, it's very, very easy to lose the sense of the big picture. Because when you starting to look for details in the photo, or even if you paint live, you get this tunnel vision that you only see a small part of the big picture. And you're starting to pick out all the subtle contrast that you see in your tunnel vision. And if you transfer that into your painting, you can get too much detail and unnecessary contrast in your painting. And that's something I fall into a little bit when I'm doing this one because there's not enough lighting contrast for me to see on her face. So all the details and really subtle values all shows up and I was trying to paint them all. So here I add a little bit of dark to the corner of her lips. Don't draw a solid dark through her lips. Just a little hint will do. Let the viewer complete the painting for you. So I remember at this stage, I feel like the painting is going okay, but something isn't quite right. I can't exactly tell what it is. Because again, I got really tunnel vision, so I lost the grasp of the big picture. Now looking back, I should have found that out a little bit earlier, but when I was painting it, I'm so into it, it was really hard for me to see. So I took a break and I start to paint the hair. The hair is the probably the darkest part of the painting. And use the tip of the brush, trying to get those delicate hair strained out. I was hoping by painting the dark hair, the value range will be complete and it's going to make the painting look better and more anchored. Continue the value down and paint her neck. Her neck is really too bright, so I need to add a little bit of value in it, a little bit more opaque mixtures. And now painting the hair does make the painting look more complete. The value range is complete. We have dark, middle value, and light. But by adding the dark, you're starting to have a reference how dark things can go. And the middle value doesn't seem as dark anymore because you have darker values. So that's what made me do some glazing at the end, but we haven't get to that just yet. And now I want to start to paint her shirt because everything else looks very empty and I want to start to fill in the space. And I pre-wet the shirt area first and I put some cerulean blue wet onto wet and it becomes this beautiful color. I love the cerulean blue from Mission Gold. It's very, very pretty and very intense. And her shirt, her blouse, is actually this beautiful blue dye shirt, so this is perfect with watercolor. So working on other areas other than the face gave me a little bit of break. That's what I do when I feel a little bit stuck on the face. Work on some other areas first, and then come back. And the face is now dry. And then I starting to realize that I need to add a little bit more color on her face. Everything feels too white, feels too pale. So now I do my first glaze on her face. Not everywhere because I still want to preserve some light. But immediately you starting to see that it looks better. It bridges the gap between the dark and the light. I also feel like it's time to do some background. So the background, I keep them simple. It's just a neutral gray. And I might add a little bit warm and cool color, but it's just a simple neutral gray. And that's going to make the light part of the skin lighter and the hat lighter as well. And now we get a little bit more sense of lighting because we add the background and keep the background nice and simple. Try to finish that in one wash. Adding a bit cool color on the bottom.
work on the lips a little bit more. Feels like it needs to be a bit more red, a bit more intense. And I also try to work on the eye a little bit. The white part of the eyes feels a little bit too light. Adding a few more hair strength details. Starting to paint the cast shadow from the hat on her shirt. It's very subtle, but it's there. And a little bit of that hard edge, some contrast, makes the light a little bit more obvious because there is a very strong light in the environment. It's just that most of her face is under her hat. Okay, time to paint some details and some dark on her hat. Some occluded shadows, on her hat and also there is a light side and a dark side on her hat even though the hat itself is actually very bright we can still give it just a little bit of value difference so that we can feel the hat as a three-dimensional scene so i try to keep her blouse and her hat very loosely painted it just need to be there and shows a little bit of structure. And this is the part where I started to take a deep breath and do another layer of glaze with a little bit more opaque color. Because when I squeeze my eyes and look at the photo reference, yes, the eye and the lips, they pops out, but they are still blend into her face quite well. And I felt like that's what I was missing. So I decided to do a glaze. And here I didn't speed up just so that you can see it's actually not a very fast process. I took a little bit of time trying to make sure that I paint exactly where I need. And I also do a little bit of softening. So I still consider this a layer of glaze because I pretty much paint over most of the face, even some of the lighter areas. I darkened them as well. And it took quite a bit of courage for me to do that because I need to essentially paint over most of the face and there's no turning back once I starting to paint. But I saw to myself, I tried everything that I could, so might as well do this. And if it doesn't work out, then I don't have to keep this painting. Fortunately though, if you put it side by side before and after glaze, you can see that subtle glaze actually makes the face looks quite a bit better. The value transition is much more seamless. And lastly, I painted some highlight using white gouache, some of a little tiny light piercing through the hole of her hat, and a little rim light on the edge of her face. And we are finished. After the paint dry and settled in, the overall painting looks a lot better than I expected. And that's always a wonderful feeling that even though you struggle in the middle of the painting, when you finish with what you consider a successful painting, you really feel accomplished and you really learn something from it. And here's me trying to be honest with you. I still struggle in almost every single painting that I do, and that's okay. I am still in a journey to be a better painter, just like many people, maybe just like you as well. And there you have it, the magic of glaze. I encourage you to take out some of your older paintings and see how this technique can change your paintings. So that's it for this video. I hope you are doing well. My day job is now winding down a bit more, so I can hopefully start to do more videos. I also have things planned out for Cafe Watercolor this year, so stay tuned for that. I'm Eric from Cafe Watercolor. Hope you have a wonderful day wherever you are. I will see you next time. Bye.